You step out of your time machine onto the shores of Australia 50,000 years ago, and the first thing you notice isn't the heat or the unfamiliar landscape. It's the silence where there should be screaming. Because what I'm about to show you in the next 15 minutes will completely change how you think about dangerous animals forever. In the shadows of those ancient eucalyptus trees, something the size of a truck is watching you with cold, calculating eyes, and it has venom that could kill a dozen elephants. The Australia you know today, with its deadly spiders, venomous snakes, and man-eating crocodiles, is basically a petting zoo compared to what stalked this continent during the Pleistocene. We're talking about a time when evolution seemed to be having a competition to see just how absolutely terrifying it could make life on Earth. And Australia was winning. Meet Megalania, whose scientific name Varanus Priscus literally means ancient monitor lizard. But that's like calling a nuclear bomb a large firecracker. And here's the thing that'll blow your mind. We almost didn't discover just how terrifying this thing really was. This wasn't just the biggest lizard that ever lived. It was a seven meter long venomous nightmare that made today's Komodo dragons look like cute little geckos. Imagine a monitor lizard the length of a school bus, with teeth like serrated steak knives and venom glands that could pump toxins directly into wounds. But here's what makes your blood run cold. Megalania wasn't some clumsy giant. Recent studies show it could sprint at nearly 11 kilometers per hour. Now I know what you're thinking. That doesn't sound that fast, right? Well, imagine this. That's faster than you can jog, and this thing weighs as much as a small car. That might not sound fast until you realize this was a quarter-ton predator that could climb trees, swim, and had the patience to wait motionless for hours before striking. It had a skull designed like a vice, complete with a bony crest between its eyes that archaeologists think helped it smash through bone. The fossil evidence tells us these monsters weren't just random killers, they were calculated hunters. Their teeth show wear patterns consistent with bone crushing, and their jaw structure could generate bite forces that would make a great white shark nervous. They hunted the giant marsupials that roamed ancient Australia, creatures that weighed several tons. And they didn't just kill them, they systematically dismantled them. But if Megalania was prehistoric Australia's dragon, then Thylacolio carnifex was its shapeshifter, a predator so bizarre that when scientists first discovered its fossils, they literally thought someone was playing a prank on them. What they found broke every rule of evolution we thought we knew. Imagine taking the bite force of an African lion, the ambush tactics of a leopard, and the anatomy of a wombat, then cranking everything up to nightmare levels. Thylacoleo carnifex, the so-called marsupial lion, wasn't actually related to lions at all. It was a pouched mammal, like a kangaroo or koala, but evolution had twisted it into something that defied every rule about how predators should work. Its ancestors were peaceful plant eaters, think cuddly koalas and gentle wombats. But somewhere along the way, the marsupial lion's family tree took a hard left turn into pure predatory madness, and the fossil evidence of exactly how this happened will haunt your dreams. The first thing you'd notice about this creature wasn't its size, though at over 130 kilograms, it was built like a heavyweight boxer. It was the teeth. Where most carnivores have pointed canines for piercing, Thylacolio had massive, ever-growing incisors that looked like ivory daggers. But the real horror show was at the back of its mouth. Enormous premolars that worked like bolt cutters, capable of shearing through bone like it was soft cheese. Scientists have calculated that Thylacolio had the strongest bite force of any mammal that ever lived. But here's where it gets absolutely insane. And I need you to pay attention to this next part because it's going to sound impossible. Pound for pound, it could deliver more crushing power than a lion twice its size. And those weren't just random adaptations. The marsupial lion's entire skull was a precision-engineered killing machine. The muscle attachment points on its fossilized bones tell us it had jaw muscles so massive they would have bulged visibly beneath its fur. But the marsupial lion's deadliest weapon wasn't in its mouth, it was on its hands. Each front paw had a thumb claw that extended like a switchblade, measuring up to 15 centimeters long. That's longer than your smartphone. Now imagine that buried in your chest. These weren't climbing claws or defensive weapons. They were disemboweling tools, perfectly curved for slicing open the belly of prey animals. 
Recent fossil discoveries have revealed just how this predator used its terrifying anatomy. Unlike modern big cats that rely on speed and pursuit, Thylacoleo was built like a linebacker, massively muscled but with a rigid backbone that made it terrible at running. Instead, it was the ultimate ambush predator. Its powerful forelimbs and massive claws made it an incredible climber, capable of hauling its 130-kilogram body up trees with ease. This scene actually happened millions of times based on the fossil evidence we found. A giant depradodon, a marsupial the size of a rhinoceros, approaches a waterhole in the ancient Australian forest, completely unaware that death is watching from above. Above, hidden in the canopy, Thylacolio waits with supernatural patience. Its rigid tail and powerful hind limbs create a living tripod, allowing it to brace itself on branches that would snap under the weight of any normal animal. When the moment comes, it drops like a furry thunderbolt, thumb claws extended, jaws already opening to deliver that bone-crushing bite. The fossil evidence from cave sites across Australia tells us this hunting strategy worked for nearly two million years. Thylacolia wasn't just successful, it was dominant. Scratch marks found on cave walls show these predators didn't just hunt on the ground. They were climbing specialists that used caves as nurseries, dragging their kills into rocky overhangs where they could feed their young in safety. If you think the predators were terrifying, wait until you meet their prey. Depratodon optatum looked like someone took a wombat and fed it nothing but steroids for a million years. But here's the crazy part, this isn't even the weirdest thing we're going to talk about today. At 3 meters long and weighing over 2 tons, this was the largest marsupial that ever lived, a living bulldozer covered in fur. But Depratodon wasn't just big, it was weird big. Its skull alone was massive enough that early European settlers used them as water troughs. Those huge grinding teeth could strip bark from trees like industrial sanders, and its powerful claws could dig burrows large enough to hide a car. Recent isotope analysis of their fossilized teeth reveals they could eat practically anything plant-based. And when I say anything, I mean they could literally eat trees. Entire trees. Which explains why the forest back then looked completely alien. These weren't gentle giants wandering peacefully through ancient meadows. Depratodon herds would have transformed landscapes like living earth movers, stripping vegetation, and digging massive wallows that reshaped entire ecosystems. Their fossil trackways show they traveled in family groups, with adults forming protective barriers around their young. Because even at two tons, they had to worry about predators. The relationship between Depratodon and its predators created a prehistoric arms race. As the giant marsupials grew bigger and developed thicker hides, predators like Thylacolio and Megalania evolved more powerful weapons. Claw marks on Depratodon fossils show us these battles actually happened, massive gouges that could only have been made by equally massive predators. But here's where this story gets even more unbelievable. And I know you're probably thinking, how could it possibly get worse? Well, buckle up, because the megafauna wasn't limited to the famous few. Australia's Pleistocene was populated by an entire cast of oversized nightmares. Genyornis newtoni was a flightless bird that stood 2 meters tall and weighed 200 kilograms. Imagine an emu pumped up to the size of a grizzly bear, with a beak powerful enough to crack nuts the size of bowling balls. Procoptodon golia was a kangaroo that would have looked down at a professional basketball player. At over 2 meters tall when standing upright, it had a face flattened like a pug's and enormous hands with two massive claws. Unlike modern kangaroos that bound on their powerful hind legs, Procoptodon walked upright like a person, a 230-kilogram person with built-in can openers for hands. In the waterways lurked Palamnarchus, a land crocodile that hunted like a big cat. Unlike modern crocodiles that ambush from water, this nightmare sprinted across dry land on legs positioned directly beneath its body. At 5 meters long with a skull designed for crushing, it was essentially a crocodilian wolf. And soaring overhead was Host's eagle. Wait, that was New Zealand. But Australia had its own aerial terrors, including massive pythons like Wonambi naricortensis that could grow to 6 meters long and were perfectly adapted for constricting prey the size of cars. For millions of years, this ecosystem of giants thrived across Australia. 
But something was coming that would end it all, and the way it happened will change how you think about extinction forever. The continent was wetter then, covered in vast forests and grasslands that could support megafauna weighing tons. Fossil pollen shows us a landscape of giant trees and diverse plant communities that created the perfect environment for supersized animals. But around 350,000 years ago, something began to change. Australia started drying out slowly but inexorably. The massive inland lakes began to shrink. Forests retreated to isolated pockets, and the vast grasslands that supported herds of giant marsupials gradually disappeared. The fossil record shows us this wasn't a sudden catastrophe. It was a slow strangulation that lasted hundreds of thousands of years. As water sources became scarce and vegetation changed, the megafauna found themselves in an ever-tightening noose. The largest herbivores were hit first, unable to find enough food to sustain their massive bodies. As they died out, the predators that depended on them followed. Recent dating of megafauna fossils reveals a staggered extinction pattern. Different species disappeared at different times, but the trend was unmistakable. By 46,000 years ago, most of the giants were gone. The few that remained would face a new challenge that evolution hadn't prepared them for. Humans arrived in Australia around 65,000 years ago, during the tail end of the megafauna's slow decline. And what happened next sounds like something from a horror movie, because our ancestors looked at these monsters and decided to hunt them. For thousands of years, our ancestors shared the continent with these prehistoric giants. Archaeological evidence from sites like Cuddy Springs shows that early Australians not only encountered megafauna, they hunted them. But this wasn't the quick blitzkrieg extinction that some scientists once proposed. The relationship between humans and megafauna was complex, lasting for over 20,000 years. Aboriginal Dreamtime stories preserve memories of some of these creatures, describing giant animals and monsters that match remarkably well with what we know about the extinct megafauna. Stone tools found alongside megafauna bones tell us our ancestors were skilled enough to take down prey many times their size. But they were also selective, intelligent hunters who understood sustainability. The evidence suggests that early Australians may have actually prolonged the survival of some species through careful management of fire and vegetation. The final extinctions weren't caused by overhunting alone. Climate change, habitat loss, and human impact created a perfect storm that the last megafauna couldn't survive. By 40,000 years ago, the age of giants was over. Australia's modern ecosystem, still dangerous by global standards, was born from the ashes of something far more terrifying. Today, only fragments remain of Australia's prehistoric nightmare. But what if I told you that some of these creatures might not be as extinct as we think? What I'm about to show you next will give you chills. Saltwater crocodiles and large monitor lizards are the last echoes of the giant reptilian predators. Red kangaroos and wombats carry the genetic legacy of their massive relatives, but they're shadows of what once was, house cats where there used to be tigers. The fossil sites of Australia continue to yield new discoveries. Each bone, each tooth, each fossilized footprint adds another piece to the puzzle of this lost world. Recent finds include evidence that some megafauna may have survived longer than we thought, hidden in remote refuges where forests persisted even as the continent dried. Scientists are now using cutting-edge techniques to extract DNA from megafauna fossils, opening the possibility that we might one day reconstruct entire genomes from these extinct giants. While we're nowhere near bringing back a megalania or a thylacolio, and frankly, that's probably for the best, this research helps us understand how evolution creates and destroys the impossible. The story of Australia's megafauna isn't just about prehistoric monsters. It's about how ecosystems rise and fall, how species adapt to change, and how even the most perfectly evolved predators can vanish when their world transforms too quickly. In our current era of rapid climate change and extinction, the ghosts of the Pleistocene offer both warning and wonder because somewhere in the Australian outback, the wind still whispers through landscapes that once echoed with the roars of marsupial lions and the thunderous footsteps of giants. And if you listen carefully on a quiet night, you can almost hear the sound of massive claws scraping against stone and remember when Australia was the most terrifying place on Earth.